In this video, we'll see how to carry out a one sample T interval and how to evaluate the interval on the TI. The instructions for the 83 and the 84 are the same. In this example, we have that the nutrition label on a bag of potato chips says that a one ounce serving of potato chips has 130 calories. A random sample of 35 bags is selected and yields a mean of 134 calories with an SD of 17 calories. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the true average calories in one ounce of these potato chips. Is there evidence that the nutrition label is inaccurate? To answer this, we will find a one sample T interval. We have one sample and we're dealing with a mean, so this makes sense. We verify our conditions. We have one random sample and our sample size is 35, which is at least 30. So that is satisfied and we don't need to look further at the data. If the sample size were smaller than 30, we would have to make a plot of the data and inspect the data. To construct our confidence interval, we have our point estimate plus or minus t star times the SE of that estimate. Our point estimate is the sample average of 134. Um, here we have, we can look in the formula sheet if we need to, and the SE of the estimate is s over the square root of n. So s is the sample SD, which is 17, N is the sample size, which is 35, and we have 34 degrees of freedom. But the question is, how do we get this T star here? So we need T star with 34 degrees of freedom. This is not going to be the same as Z star, so we can't just use 1.96. We have to look at a T table. So we can pull up a T table here, and we have uh, a 95% confidence interval. We want to find rho that corresponds to the degrees of freedom. 34 is not on this table, so when it's not on the table, we'll just round down. So we'll look at row 30 here, and at 95 confidence, we have a 2.042. So that's where that number comes from, 2.042. And so now we can evaluate this manually, or we can use the shortcut on the calculator. And the shortcut on the calculator is stat tests and then t interval. So we'll go to stat tests and scroll down to find t interval. Hit enter. If we have the data, we can enter it into L1. Always leave frequency as 1. But in this case, we have the stats, the summary stats, so we'll choose stats. What is x bar? Our x bar is 134. Our s, or sample SD, is 17. n, the sample size, is 35. Our c level, in this case, is 0.95. Make sure to change this if you're doing something other than a 95% confidence interval. And then we can do calculate and we get our left endpoint and right endpoint. So we get 128.16 to 139.84. Great, so our interpretation then is we are 95% confident that the true average calories in one ounce of these chips is between these two numbers, 128.16 and 139.84. So based on this, do we have evidence that the nutrition label is inaccurate? Let's see, they claim that it's 130. 130 is located inside this interval, so it is a reasonable value. All these values in here are reasonable. Values outside are going to be considered unreasonable. And so since 130 is in the interval, we don't have evidence that the label is inaccurate. So we can say because 130 is inside the interval, we do not have evidence that the label is inaccurate. 130 is a reasonable value. That's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe below.